for language enthusiasts who want to wrap their head around spoken Arabic. Academics in Abu Dhabi are looking to make the process a little easier. Salim Saeed investigates how new technology has the potential to revolutionize the way in which we learn languages. How do our brains work? And how do our brains switch between speaking different languages? These are questions researchers at New York University Abu Dhabi are trying to figure out. How? By using multi-million dollar devices. The research uses data collected from advanced technology like this, a neuroimaging technique called magnetoencephalography, or MEG, which can read and record magnetic fields emitted from our brains. The equipment, which contains more than 200 sensors, is used by linguistic department academics to measure how much brain power people exert when changing languages. The areas of the brain predominantly used in language expression are the prefrontal cortex and the anterior cingulate cortex. Esti Blanco Eloreta is a fourth-year student who, in a two-year study, testing about 20 native bilingual speakers, discovered that when the group naturally alternated between Arabic and English without being requested to, both brain areas showed almost no activity. But if they were told to translate from one language to the other, both cortexes became highly engaged. Which means that the brain is using more resources or is using more of its activity in order to be able to perform this task. Other language-related research taking place in the capital is being conducted by researcher Dr. Samantha Ray, who I met with to understand how Arabic speakers produce sounds from their throats. Middle East and North African languages have around 29 pronounced sounds, compared to English with more than 40. And unlike many languages, Arabic is spoken by using the very back of the throat and the very front of the mouth, the entire vocal tract. To best explain things, Dr. Ray placed me inside an MRI machine, and ask me to say the letters in Arabic that are uncommon to other languages. The images captured showed the range of muscles moving inside my windpipe. It's a new approach to learning that has produced some interesting results. For example, sounds such as a heavy K or Q, where the tongue pushes the uvula back instead of up, as in the case of the regular K common in English language. K. Q. We're, we're pushing the frontiers of how to do this research of how to um, image parts of the throat that are utilized in these sounds of Arabic that are cross-linguistically quite rare. And along with her MRI research, she's hopeful that in the future, her findings may help students learning Arabic to visualize the way their bodies and brains are learning a foreign language in tandem.